locked up in the temple, fasting and praying for the Messiah to come. So both in the natural and in the spirit, it is women that gave birth to the saints. I'm saying this to you, Pastor the saints. Continue in that legacy of the great woman of God. I know that sometimes ministry is difficult for women because the church has made ministry a boys club. But that's not what we see in the scriptures. The women are right there with the men, playing many times even a more important role than the men. So be encouraged, pastor. Continue in that legacy of the women that have continued to bring God to the people. Had it not been for women, the church would not be where it is today. And if you want me to prove that, if I ask all the women to leave right now, there's going to be about 10 of us in here. <laughs> True. And that's the same in every church. So thank God for the women that have always maintained the church so that when the men feel like coming back, there's a church to come back to. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for the women in ministry. Amen. I say this to encourage all the women here who are in ministry as I see some of you here. I know Pastor Esther, Dr. Carmen, I see Reverend Grace back there and Evangelist Reed, great woman of God. Continue to this work. The work of God is not for men. It is for all of us, the children of God. Amen. Now, while I'm here appreciating the pastor, I want to personally appreciate this brother. Amen. Last time when I was here, I, I think you called me to preach and sometimes I misbehave. I end up praying for about half an hour. And I was listening to the tape and I said, wow. I don't know what this brother was playing back there in the background, but there was something spiritual about it. I think it took me and the prayer into another dimension. And as I listened to the tape, I said, what is this? And it is this brother back there doing some spiritual magic on the keyboard. And I, and, I, and I kept listening to the tape, not even to hear the prayer, but just to hear the brother playing whatever he was playing back there. I said, my God, there's Holy Ghost in his fingers. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep, keep doing that thing. We have to appreciate one another, brother. Yeah. I was so touched by what he was doing back there. Spiritual magic on the keyboard. <laughs> um, this time they have limited my time because I'm always misbehaving. So, and I, I appreciate it because every time I come I try to behave but I stay too long. So this time I'm going to try my best to work with the time that I've been given. So as it is my custom here, I'm going to ask you now to just stand with me. We are about to enter into a sacred time, amen? amen. I, I have a problem with when we get too used to church and too used to hearing the word and too used to hearing the preacher. It becomes protocol. We come and we sit and we just, as if it's a show. But this is a holy place. This is a holy time. God is here. And so we must keep our minds and our spirit in that place. It's not church as usual. This is not church like last week. This is a new day in God. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to ask you now to just do two things. As always, I ask you to pray for me because I believe that, as I've said here before, that it's a very serious thing. When someone stands here and speaks into your life, they can destroy you or they can build you up. So I'm asking you to pray for me as I'm about to speak to you. And I'm asking you also to present yourself before God. Look into your life. Look into your heart. See that thing that God is displeased with and present it to him now. Because we want nothing to stand between us and God. We came here for one reason and it is to meet with God. And it would be a shame if we should leave and not meet with him because of things in our life. So I'm asking you to do some personal washing of yourself before God right now. You didn't come here to listen to me. You came to meet with God. So begin to speak to God and search your heart. Whatever that thing is in your life that you know God is not pleased with. Put it 
to him now as your father and he will never reject you. You may be ashamed, you may be guilty, but God's arms are open to you. So I'm asking you to do those two things right now. Just begin to repent before God and pray for me. And the Lord has given me utterance in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. 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 Father, we have gathered in this house to meet with you. Father, we are here because we long for you. Father, we are here because we hunger and we thirst for you. Father, forgive us for becoming distracted with churchiness, with religion, with the mundane, with entertainment. Father, let this Sunday be a sacred Sunday. Father, let this day be a new day. A day, oh God, when we will look in your face without hanging our heads in shame. But oh God, with our mouth filled with praise because we know that we are standing with you and you are with us. Father, come and speak to your people. For I have nothing to say to them, God. For you alone, but you will God, my Lord, my God will speak to Holy Jesus. Holy Jesus. Come down into this house yes, and minister Lord. to your people. Minister to us, O God, for we are in desperate need. We are tired of church as usual. We are tired of the same old, same old. Speak your word. It is you, God. My God, come and Give us wine to drink. Give us bread to eat. Give us water that will never run dry. Jesus, we need you. Every one of us, we have gone astray. So we have we have failed you. Oh God, we come to you. Not to run and to hide from you. Not to play games with you. Not to play games with you. Get the word to seek him. There will not be a move of God. Father, God of you will give the word to seek him. Give your word and he will declare. Give your word, mighty God. Only your word. Only your word, Father. Let the broken heart be made of the Lord. Let the broken heart be made of the Lord. Release your word upon him. Father, let your power move in this house. Oh, Rabba, Baba. Father, we become lazy in the house. Father, we become a great church. We replace you with the church. We replace the spirit with our program. Oh, God, this afternoon we are calling you. Oh, Masurasi, Hapurasama, Rabba, Shandere, Bokosoto, Rabba, Yes, Lord, we are tired. We want to hear the move. We are tired of where we are. We want to hear the move of God. Oh, we've been holding on. We want to hear the move of the living God. It has gone still. We want to hear the move of the living God. Fresh man, Holy Ghost. Father, we are worthy. 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 I release the blood upon every soul in this house. Father, you know every need. Yes, Lord. Father, you know every trouble. Father, you know every pain. Hallelujah. Come and let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. 
Father, we are mere men before you. Hallelujah. But oh God, when you come, Hallelujah. we are transformed into something else. Hallelujah, my God. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, oh, God. oh yes, my God. Father, we commit our sins into your hands. Oh yes. Father, we repent of our sins. Hallelujah. Yes, Father, we are failing. Yes, yes, Father, we are guilty. Yes, yes Father, we are far from yes, where we I are to be. But where can we go now? <laughs> But to come to you, our deliverer. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, come. Let our gathering not be in vain. Oh. Yes, Lord. Let our gathering not be in vain. Speak, Holy Ghost. 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 In the name of Yahusha. In the name of Yahusha. But I will come forward before the children of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 If you would turn your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We'll pick it up at verse 14. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 6, are we there? Page 1675, you found it? There is a Lord. Too many different versions of the Bible today. <laughs> Too many versions, praise God. Second Corinthians chapter 6, pick it up at verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked, together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial, the devil? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separated, said the Lord. Says who? And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, Amen. and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons, and who? Say the Lord Almighty. Chapter 7, verse 1, continues there. As I explained to you last time, the Bible was not written with these chapter divisions. So chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Tell somebody a new dimension. A new dimension. Brothers and sisters, I suspect that it is time for us as a church, as people that call ourselves people of God, to move on. Move on in Christ. There is more grounds to cover. There are more dimensions to get to. There's greater things in Christ for us to develop into. And we must move on. I remember when our ancestors were in the wilderness, going around the mountain, round and round and round. And what did the Lord say? You've been going around this mountain too long. I suspect that as a church, we are in a similar place today. We have perfected how to do church. 
we know how to do it so well that we don't even need Holy Spirit to come. We know how to read the Bible. We know how to do exegesis. We go to Bible school and we learn how to do it. We know how to pray because we've heard others do it. So we copy it. We know how to dress because we've seen others do it. We know how to sing. We know the songs to sing. We know just what to do. I remember a story that I always discuss with Evangelist Reed about how some American pastors invited some ministers from China. Yeah. And at that time, you know, the gospel was just entering into China by the move of the Holy Spirit, not by the move of men. For they had no Bibles and they had no pastors. But yet they had the fastest growing church in the world. And I believe they still do. No pastors and no Bibles. But the Holy Spirit himself is doing the work in China. And so the American pastors invited these ministers from China to come to America. And they did a tour of the churches, the big churches and the popular churches. So they could see what church is like on this side of the hemisphere. And as they went around America, visiting different churches, and the pastors showing them the things that the American church has accomplished, the things that they have built, the universities, the schools, and the big edifice, and all these things. And at the end of the tour, the American minister said to this Chinese pastor, what do you think? And this is what the man says. He says, I am amazed at how much you guys have accomplished without the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, we've learned how to do church. And so we do it. We do it. He showed off to this Chinese man all these big church buildings that they have in America. Big mega churches, projector screens, and all kinds of fancy things that they have. In the name of Jesus, that is. And the Chinese man was shocked. Because all they know on that side is the Holy Ghost. And he had enough discernment to see that all of this was not the work of God. <laughs> Yet the American pastors felt accomplished. Look what we have done in the name of Jesus. Yet God was not in it. It is time for us to move on into a new dimension. I want to speak to you this afternoon for a message that I have titled Perfecting Holiness. Perfecting Holiness. I don't have much time. There are some few things that these few verses that we just read shows us. There is a call, there is a promise, and there is a condition. The scripture says that we are the temple of God. Now the word used for temple here is no metaphor like we think. The word used for temple here is the same word used to refer to the temple in the Old Testament that Moses built. With the holy place and the holies of holies. The same word that refers to that temple is the same word that Paul uses here to refer to us. And we know that it is not far because the scripture God said in the Old Testament that I do not dwell in temples built by the hands of men. God has built a temple for himself. Of course. Only he could build a temple for himself. Can men build temples for God? From the time we touch it is corrupt. So God has built a temple for himself. And that temple is you and I. Amen. Amen. He says, you are the temple of God. And he goes on to say that you are the people of God. And he says that you are the sons and the daughters of God. This is the call. God has called us to be his temple, to be his people, and to be his children. Amen. This is the call. To be his place of dwelling, to be his people, that means to be his nation. God had a nation called Israel. But we know how the story goes. Israel rejected him and he moved on. 
from Israel. And the Bible says he went to the Gentiles. But did all the Gentiles receive the gospel? Of course not. So God has built a new nation for himself. And that nation is the church. So he says, you will be my people. Which country is God's country? The church. Wow. He says, you will be my people. But it's a call. It is a call. God is saying, this is what I want. I want to make you my temple. I want to make you my people. And I want to make you my children. Now you say to yourself, what's in it for me? There is a promise. He says, I will dwell in you. I will walk among you. And I will be your father. Amen. A father is one that generates. One that creates. One that brings forth. Bible says that Satan is the father of lies. Bible says that Abraham is the father of Israel. One that generates something. One that guides, one that teaches, one that leads, one that protects, one that keeps, one that preserves. That's who a father is. And he says, I will be your father. In other words, I am the one that will create you, make you what you ought to be. I will guide you. I will teach you. I will lead you. I will preserve you. I will protect you. And I will provide for you. Hallelujah. That's what a father does. Hallelujah. A call, a promise, and a condition. What is the call? Be my people. Be my children. Be my temple. What is the promise? I will dwell with you. I will be your father. My God. Now, the call, we don't mind. The promise, we love. But the condition problem. is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the condition. What does he say? Let's read it. He says, cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh yes. and spirit. Come on. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Yes. That's the condition. That's it. We can be the people of God. Why? Because God has already made it possible. We can be the temple of God because God has made it possible. And of course, God is who he is. He is a father. He is a protector. He is a provider. He is a teacher. He is a guide. He is a shepherd. He is wonderful. He has no change to change. That's right. Hallelujah. So the only problem is you and I meeting the condition. Of course, we have to perfect holiness if we are the temple of God. The temple by nature of its purpose is a holy place. A temple is a place built particularly for God. Yes. It's reserved for God. Yes. It is to do the work of God. Yes. It is to worship God. It is where the presence of God abides. Hallelujah. It is the house of God. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Therefore, it has to be yes. a holy place. Has to. Amen. Amen. Shut up. Has I was thinking about this message. Glory to God. And I don't want to disturb you too much. But as I thought about us as temples of God versus the building, how some of us will clean this place from top to bottom. Mama. It's a pleasure to vacuum this place. Some of us, we love to clean the church. Oh, no. oh, Think about this, brothers and sisters. If you walked in here Sunday morning, and saw a bunch of people getting drunk and cussing and fighting and having sex in this church. Mm -hmm. How disgusted you would be. That's right. You would walk out of here and never come back. That's it, yeah. You would say, that's no church. What kind of church that? Right. Yeah. You would say, that's no place of God. Yes. I don't know what Pastor Immaculate doing down there, but that ain't church. No, that's right. That's, that's what you would say. Yes. Think about it. 
if you came in here and seen a bunch of drunk people listening to reggae music, having a good time, not in the name of the Lord, how would you feel? My God. How would you feel? How many of you would come here for church if you knew that on Saturday nights, Pastor Immaculate rent this building out to Stone Love, which is dance hall musicians? How many of you would still come here knowing that on Saturday night, all manners of evil are happening in this place? You wouldn't come here? No. Yet we live with ourselves as a filthy temple. My God. My God. An unclean temple. Amen. Jesus. We have been deceived. My God. Because it hurts us more to see filthiness in this building My than to see it in ourselves. Jesus. My God. We are deceived. My God. God doesn't care about this block and this cement. No. This is built with men's hands. Yes. My God. When we are not here, God ain't here either. My God. But we will clean this church upside down every week. And we won't clean our hearts. Mighty God. We are this. Hey, Jesus. Look how nicely we are dressed. My God. Because we know that we are coming to the house of God. Yes. We have put on nice garments. My God. My God. Yet in the spirit, our garments are fit. Yes. Jesus. We are the We are the Some of us, there are some things that we would never wear to church. I'm not wearing that. It's not nice enough. church mean? Building? No. Church simply means called out once. You are here because God has called you here. And he has called you to make you his dwelling place. God wants to live in you. This is the call of Christianity. God is looking for a house. God is looking for real estate in Toronto. My God. God is looking for a place to dwell. Yes. God wants to do a great work in this city. Yes, come on. But when he comes, he needs a place to stay. That's right, that's right. That's what he has called us for. Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. That's it. TD Jets is here. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's walking on the streets at night? He's in some nice hotel. Yes. He has a place to stay. God don't want a hotel though. He wants you. That's right. That's right. We are crying day and night for God to come. Come, Lord, and do a new thing. But we have prepared no place for Him. My God. Oh, glory. And we are wondering is God not hearing us? I hear some people say, the Holy Spirit is not moving like it used to. No, you are not living like the people back then used to. Hallelujah! That's right, you're preaching. Go ahead. God used to have a place where he could come. Go ahead. But now, there is no place. That's right. Jesus. That's right. Hey, For the temple is filthy. That's yes. right. The temple is corrupt. Yes. Corrupt. How can you expect the holy God of Israel to dwell in an unclean place? Come on, that's the word. Shoot! Thank you, Jesus. Hey, that's the truth. Hey, We have to move on, brother. Move on from keeping church and playing church. Because people are coming among us and they're dying right in our presence. Thank God. We have been called to perfect holiness. Amen. 
preachers don't preach this no more because they are struggling. My God, that's the truth. Help us, Jesus. Clean up time. Purge. We have moved on to God will bless you and give you your dreams and prosper you. Amen. Not you. His people. What they preach is true, but it is for his people. And his people are a holy people. Brothers and sisters, you are not called to come to church. You are church. Amen. Where is God? Where is God? Mighty God. Jesus. If he can't be found in any of us, then he can't be found anywhere. God wants to live in us. That's what he says. He says, I will dwell in you and I will walk among you. Can you imagine? God wants to be right here in our midst, living with us, singing and dancing and worshiping with us, preaching with us. My God. That's what God desires. It's you that he desires. Jesus. Jesus. Mm. Oh, he has already made the call. Jesus. Be my people. Be my temple. Yes. Be my children. Yes. He already made his promise. I will dwell with you. Mm-hmm. I will be your father. Yes. It's our time now yes. to meet the conditions. Yes. It's our time to meet the conditions. I'm preaching this message to you, brethren, not because I want to disturb you, but I have a heart for this city. That the power of God will move in Toronto in a way that has never done. As when I came here the first time, I told you that there was a revival coming. And I've been praying, I've been asking God to do it. Because it seems as though the church is in a place where it's almost useless. Therefore, God himself has to do something divine. God himself needs to do a new thing. That's right, that's right. God himself needs to breathe upon the church again. And so as I was praying, as I always do, for God to move upon this city. Yes. Praying earnestly about two weeks ago, begging God, saying, God, just, just do something. That the unbelievers may say, whoa, whoa. this God of the Christians Come is the now. God of the hey, universe. Come on. Yeah. I've been begging God to do My God. And as I was in prayer, Pastor, I don't classify myself as a prophet. But as I was hey, praying, Jesus. I began to move. A word began to come forth. Yes. And I heard the Lord say, prepare for a visitation. Amen. Prepare for a visitation. Hey, Jesus. Whether you like it or not, God is about to move. That's right. That's right. Whether you like it or not, God is coming to this city. That's right. And so I'm telling you, prepare yourself. Come on. Come on. He is coming, brother. Yes. Yes. To this city. Yes. Amen. I was so moved in my prayers. I never heard nothing like that before. He said, prepare for a visitation. How do we prepare? Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. That means of your body, and your mind, and of the spirit. That means if you're a witchcraft worker, cut it out. You're having a rude awakening. It's coming. I don't want to get into listing sins for you know them. Yes. <laughs> you know what's uncleanness. I won't come here and preach to you what uncleanness is because you know. Yes. You know. You may be ignorant of the power of God, but you're not ignorant of sin. You know it well. Cleanse yourself of this. That's things. right. Amen. We want God to move? Yes. You move. Yes. You move. You move, move from unrighteousness into righteousness. Perfecting holiness. Hear that? Perfecting it. That means that we have to work on this holy life. 
Because the enemy is there. 24 7 pushing and pulling you therefore you have to be intentional and vigilant in your living holy don't just come and say I accept you guys in my heart and say amen hallelujah sing two songs you are deceived you are deceived amen scripture doesn't say well, brother, I'm going to cleanse you. I'm going to say, let us, let us cleanse ourselves. Yes. yes, that's it. God is going to do his portion. Yes. Sometimes we are so worried about God's part. Yes. Praying to God that he will do what he says he will do. Yes. When we haven't done our part. Yes. God says I'll deliver you. God says I'll heal you. God says I'll cleanse you. I'll make you whole. If he says it, he'll do it. Yes, he will. And every day we're bothering God. God cleanse me. God heal me. God heal me. What about you? Have you done your part? Yeah. Do your part. That's right. Do your part. Yes. Amen. Perfecting. Thank you, God. Jesus. Say, brother, how can I cleanse myself? Yes. If you say that you are a believer, then you have received the power and the grace to overcome sin. Yes. It's not what God gives us when we come to Him. The power to not see. Now there's this talk in the streets, oh, we're just human beings, we're not perfect, we're never going to be perfect. If you say that, then you make the word of God a lie. That's right. And the Bible says, let God be true. And every man, including you, a liar. If the Bible says we should perfect holiness and cleanse ourselves, it means that we can do it. And if we think that we are unable, then you go on our knees and you say, Father, give me the strength. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. There is a visitation of the Lord coming. That's my message. And the Lord is saying, prepare yourself. That's it. Prepare yourself. It's time to move into a new dimension. Yes. It is time to be that temple, yes. that holy place, yes, Lord. that dwelling place yes, of God. Mighty God. People should be able to come to you when they are looking for God. Yes. I was telling a friend recently about an evangelist I know. She was ministering to some young guy in a, in a workplace. Now, getting the chance to really fully minister to him because he has no interest in religion and God. But she's a real Christian woman of God. And so just the way she lives and the way she operates is evident. And so all this time she's trying to minister to this man who has a serious alcoholic problem, among other things. She was getting nowhere with him. One weekend passed, Monday came, she met him at work, and he gives her a story, a testimony about how he had finally gotten to rock bottom, down and out, drunk and depressed and just in a terrible place, wanting to kill himself. And while he was in his apartment, possibly contemplating suicide, somehow by the grace of God, he remembered the evangelist. And he fell on his knees and he said, her name is Pam. The young man fell on his knees and he said, Oh God of Pam, deliver me. My God. And he was delivered. Amen. This is who we are called to be. <coughs> Jesus Christ said to Nathaniel, Oh, soon you will see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Yes. Yeah, on him. The heavens will open and angels will that's you and I. The heavens should be open over our lives. An angel should ascend and descend. That's right. Because we are the point of contact for heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why should the people of Toronto suffer if we are here? That's right. should mean that God is here. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
That's what we're supposed to represent. God is here. So we can tell the strength and the beauty and the holiness of the church by looking at the city. Does it look good? Does it look good? Does it look good? People are running away from the church because they have not found God there. Brothers and sisters, let us cleanse ourselves. The time is now. The time is now. Forget about the past. Forget about what you have done. Begin anew today with your walk with God. Begin new today. Put the past behind. And begin now to perfect this holiness. So that when God comes, he may find a place of dwelling in you. Please stand to your feet. Amen. Oh,